Hi, everyone. This is Jennifer Mediano. We'll go ahead and get started. Elaine, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Hi, everyone. Okay. This is Elaine Gomez. Great. Thanks, everyone, for joining. We thought we'd wait just a couple of minutes to make sure all the joining beeps stop before we began. Today, we're going to be going through the new Early Data Analyzer. Um, and we'll be recording the session as well. So what we want you to walk away with today from this presentation is, number one, an understanding of how the increased performance and ease of use and functionality of Early Data Analyzer can help you supercharge your law pre-discovery. This session is solely for you all in the Litigation Service Bureau market, and most all of you have law pre-discovery. Some of you also have Early Data Analyzer. So we really want to show you what the new version of Early Data Analyzer, how that's going to help you take your law pre-discovery and supercharge it and take your workflow to the next level. We're also going to go over the new functionality in Early Data Analyzer Web and how getting that early look at your data at the earliest point can help speed up your calling times and then also can help you support early review of e-discovery data. This also can help you with your clients. It can be an added value of what you can have them have access to and the data that they can see. So why would you add Early Data Analyzer into your workflow? So there's a couple of different reasons. First and foremost, for all of us handling these larger sets of data as they come through, is the faster ingestion speeds. So we're looking at, you know, with the right infrastructure, being able to ingest about one terabyte per a 24-hour period. And all of this has the ability to scale above and beyond. So you can continue to add workers to be able to scale above that, that threshold. Second, we have an open and flexible and mobile access to documents in your case, including full HTML5 support. This allows you and your clients to be able to access their data from anywhere. So as we see, everyone's using their iPhones and their iPads and their mobile devices. This allows, that, allows you and them to have access to the data to be able to take a view at it from your mobile devices. Also, there are some forensic file types that are not natively supported in law pre-discovery, but they are in Early Data Analyzer. So we have all of those supported, and you can utilize Early Data Analyzer for those types of file types. In addition, it's a small footprint. So we're not looking for a very large infrastructure to be able to run Early Data Analyzer. If you have a workstation with law pre-discovery running that's tied to a SQL server, that will work fine. You can run it just on your laptop. So we're looking at you being able to run this within your existing environment that you already have. We also have integrated near dupe and email thread information directly in context. So you have the availability for this within Early Data Analyzer and Early Data Analyzer Web. We'll show you this as we go through as well, so you can see the visual context that we show um, the, anal the um, analytics. You also have the ability to export text and native, native directly to review. So whether that's via a concordance stat file or XML file, you can do that, or you can also directly export it to law pre-discovery. And lastly, for those of you that love automation, we also have the open API with Early Data Analyzer. So as you want to be able to develop around Early Data Analyzer, we have the open API that allows you to do that. So what's new in Early Data Analyzer 1.9? So biggest and the thing most asked for um, as we've gone through the releases of Early Data Analyzer, we now have the direct connection to export to either a new or an existing law pre-discovery case. So no reprocessing. No more are we exporting out of Early Data Analyzer and importing into law pre-discovery. We're no longer having um, to go through the ED loaders. This is probably the biggest feature in EDA 1.9 that's going to help your workflow and help your speeds. We also have an updated dashboard. We've done a lot of work on the dashboards to give you a quick visual view of calling activities. So that's searching, that's tagging, all of that you can have the view of and your clients can have the view of it as well. 
We have an interactive document timeline that identifies the gaps in the collection, but not just that. You now can directly drill into the documents by date. So this is a big, big feature request, and so now you have the ability to directly drill into those timelines to get directly to those documents. And then we also have the enhancements to OCR in Early Data Analyzer, enhancements to performance, and also enhancements to ease of use. I can sit here and go through PowerPoints all day, um, but let's go ahead and get started and have you taking a look at Early Data Analyzer. Eleni Gama is gonna jump in here and she's gonna take us through a couple of different scenarios of what we feel like you would probably be doing um, and it can also help show the features of Early Data Analyzer. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip over some controls to Elaine. Again, if you have questions as we go through, feel free to either um, you can either put it into the chat or I can, I will also unmute the lines at the end of the session for us to have kind of open questions. So Elaine, I just passed the controls over to you and I believe I see your screen, perfect. Awesome, thanks Jen. Hi everyone and again, I'm Elaine Gama. I'll be showing EDA 1.9 desktop and web version. So Jen uh, sort of explained the uh, different features that we've added. We'll go through those four different scenarios to show you uh, exactly how EDA can benefit you as a, either an existing law user or whether you're evaluating EDA at the moment. We'll um, show you those items. And again, if you have questions, feel free to use the chat box. We'll, we'll go through the questions in the end. All right, so we will use my Enron Sample 01 case that I've created, and you can see that I've already uh, gone in, analyzed several PSP files uh, in this database. Now, we're gonna start with scenario one, and scenario one is where I have to exclude specific email domains and duplicates before producing natively. Um, so if you're currently using EDA, but maybe you're not using law pre-discovery, this is a great way to be able to search and cull through your data set um, quickly without going into law pre-discovery to process or ingest everything. Because we can produce, as Jen mentioned, either a concordance stat file from EDA or an EDRM XML 1.0 load file from EDA, as well as a corresponding text if that's something that's needed. So we'll go through the hypothetical scenario here. Um, we've got the different hash filters, as you can see, fash, or file hash filter, duplicate filter date range, so different categories that was really designed to help you uh, minimize the data set that you have. If we start with the file hash filter, for instance, you can see that we've got at least nine NIST items. These are you know, EXEs, DLLs, system file types that you're never going to use for production. So I can easily exclude those items. I'm going to jump to the duplicates since that is uh, more tailored towards the scenario here. And I'll go ahead and exclude all of those duplicates that we've found. Um, now I can go to my email sender domain and skip through the category and start basing my decision just by looking on the uh, looking at the different um, email sender domain here. I can sort on name, sort on count, uh, really depending on how I want to view this list here. And I can quickly, you know, just start making my decision based on you know the name. So I can see right away that there's you know, an easy curious email here that is probably junk mail and I can go ahead and exclude that. There are uh, several or a few items from email.vhg.com that's probably, again, junk mail and I can really start going through this list and excluding certain emails based on the domain just by looking at this list. Um, so that is sort of the um, idea here, is to envision a funnel, go through each filter and minimize the data set to the most relevant. Um, documents that you'll use. Now, we're going to uh, go ahead and run a quick keyword search as well. I'm gonna go ahead and look for the word John and see how much documents will come back with the word John. You can see that running through a simple keyword search takes me back to um, the hits here, 69 documents. And if I hit next, they'll tell me exactly where the word John appears within that document. Now, as part of my workflow, I can go ahead and tag 
the search and I can call this export one, or perhaps I need to go in and create a brand new tag and be more specific. Maybe I want to call this search term John, for example. I can easily go ahead and add that there, hit OK, and use that tag instead of export one. So now that we've tagged a single keyword search here, um, and also you have the ability to import a list of, of uh, search terms if you've got, you know, if you're provided with a list of keyword searches, you can go ahead and import that through this option. But what, what I'd like to run through for this scenario is the native export that we talked about. So we'll go through and create a native export. We're going to base this export on uh, the keyword search hits on John. You'll notice two options, and we talked about the concordance stat file and the EDRM. So you can produce both natively or select one of the two. You do have some configuration options here for a concordance stat file. So for example, if you needed to enable support for concordance native viewer or generate a .opt file, that's something that you can also include here, and you've got your default delimiters at the top. So we'll go ahead and generate both. Uh, for now, we'll also select some of the fields that we would like to include in both load files. So typically, if you're working from law pre-discovery, for example, we know that within the export utility, you've got uh, several options and settings that you can pick and choose from, including the field selection. And we also have that same field selection here. Although these fields are going to be a little bit different from the fields that you're used to seeing in law pre-discovery. But what we've done on the left side, if you notice, you've got the categories and you've got the available fields. If you are producing just emails, for example, I can go to my email or standard list. It will give me a list of all of the different standard email fields that's typically used, and I can simply hit select all, and that will give me all of the email metadata fields that I'll need for my load file. Or you can go through and select from this list here. Categorize those depending on, again, what kind of data you're exporting. I'm going to hit OK here. We've got 28 fields selected. We'll create an output directory for my desktop, but of course you could point this anywhere, including your file server or uh, wherever that location might be. So we'll just call this EDA, Native Export. We'll include the native files along with the text. Now you also have the option to convert uh, these documents or emails into HTML or MHTML format. Sort of the same options we have in the ED loader from Law Pre-Discovery. And we will base this export on a specific tag. Once I hit refresh, you'll notice the word John, and I created this tag here. Family count lets us know that that is the total with all of the attachments. I can hit export, start export, and we'll see the progress bar. So currently we're generating both the concordance stat file and the EDRM XML load file. It will also produce the native files along with the corresponding text. And that is as simple as you know, a couple clicks from here. And once I hit refresh here, I'll go ahead and show you the output. All right. I'm going to take you to the location of that directory. This is what we've generated based on the different settings that I showed, and again, total of 119 uh, natives. You've got your DAT file, and notice the different fields that we've selected. We did go with the general uh, standard email fields, and then you also have your OPT because we did enable support for concordance native viewer. And then your XML uh, load file format, going to my other screen here, but this is what it looks like. And then you've got your folders with your native corresponding text, native corresponding text, and that's what that will look like. Um, one thing to note here uh, is that I went ahead and used the prefix of the zeros and then the one, and from there it did auto increment. So if you're noticing the way that the naming convention is set up here, it is because we use the 00001 prefix. 
All right, so that is the first scenario. I will jump to the second scenario, which is um, I have a, you know, the scenario is uh, being able to look for keywords and being able to produce or identify uh, documents that we need to um, bring to law so that we can produce an, an image-based export. So hypothetically, we've, you know, we've received maybe one terabyte of data. We need to go in, import a bunch of search terms, identify exactly which search uh, documents based on those search terms need to go to law, and then start the TIFF process in law and create an export from there. So we'll use the same sample case, and this time I'm going to jump back to the search tab here. And what we'll do is we'll actually import a list of different search terms. So we'll go ahead and use this search term set here. Notice that it did import 11 search terms. So what I'll do is I'm going to uncheck John. And I can run all 11 search terms simultaneously, just like I did there by just clicking on the Run Searches. Once that's done, it gives us the count for each one of these search terms, and now I can look at the actual results. And again, we're highlighting the keyword uh, from the document that we're looking at on the right pane here. And from here, I can start either tagging on a document level or maybe tagging in groups. So if I wanted to tag everything that came back from the word uh, plural, for example, we've, you know, we've got at least 81 documents from there, I can check this box, use a tagging option, and maybe call this export one. Now, if I wanted to combine everything that came back from plural, maybe everything else that came back from insurance, or let's just go with boot for now, I can also tag that and call that the export one tag. So now I've got these two tagged under the tag name export one. So next here what we'll do is we'll do a, instead of a native export, we're gonna go ahead and run through a direct law export. And that is the new feature we've added. You'll notice three different options here. Um, and I want to point out that in the previous build of EDA, we did have just these two options, a law export and a native export. Now, with this direct export, it will copy your data and your metadata fields over to an existing or a brand new law case. And with the previous version, uh, what we had to do was uh, first transition from EDA to the ED loader within law pre-discovery and then run through the processing. But with the new direct export, it's skips through the ED loader, which means that that will save you a lot more time because we're not taking the time to actually reprocess, as Jen mentioned, or we're not having to go through the ED loader step. We're essentially skipping that, taking all this data and just moving it directly to your law case. So we'll call this law direct, oops, let's do all caps, law direct export here. And you will notice uh, slightly different settings. You really only have the option to include emails and thread. And all this means here is that it will override anything you've done in the filters to keep all your emails together in a thread. Uh, again, uh, native HTML format, so you have those two options. And then you have uh, either filtered documents or documents tagged with as your options to export. Again, hitting refresh gives me the numbers for each one of these tags that I've used throughout the case, and so far, we've really only used export one in the search John. So now that I know I've got at least 140, that's including attachments for this set here, I can click on export. You'll see the target law case drop-down menu, and this will give me a list of all of the cases that I've created in law. So whether that's a case that I created today or yesterday or maybe a month ago, if I needed to bring this data set specifically to an existing law case, I can do that by simply clicking on uh, whichever case it is. Um, and there is a, in the configuration option uh, here, there is a, there's actually a path where you would point exactly where to look to in terms of your caseless.mdb file. So that's how we're able to link your EDA or you know, create that integration because we're telling EDA where to look 
for in terms of the caseload that you're using in law. So that is a really simple setup there. We'll do a default law case, and what this will do is create a brand new law case. It will call it Enron Sample 1, because it does take the EDA case name as the default law case name if you're creating a brand new case. All right, so we will hit Start Law Direct Export. Again, we'll see the same sort of uh, status here at the top. Um, and again, kind of going back to the old law export option versus the new one, you'll notice that with the new direct law export, you're able to take advantage of the resources that you have. If you're running a for processing core machine, for example, and you did not set a threshold or a limit on the amount of cores that you can use, you'll be able to utilize all four, or really the performance is going to be as great as the hardware resources that you have. So that's what's nice about this, is that again, we're skipping through the ED loader stage and we are going directly to that either new law case or an existing law case. All right, so now that we have gone through exported 140, if I hit show, look at this all 140 documents, we see that there are no errors, so there's really no reason for me to go into the exceptions tab. I'm gonna to jump to law pre-discovery and open up the new case we just created. All right. Here it is, and we will look for Enron Sample 1, date created, and this is everything we've just imported from EDA. Now, you'll notice your native files here, metadata populated, and what we do in terms of the metadata is that we populate any fields from EDA that actually exist in law. So there will be certain fields here that might be populated if you were to use the ED loader, but you will not see it if you are. Uh, certain fields may not be populated if you've done the direct law export, so just something to note there. Um, currently, the tag, so uh, the way to identify which document came from EDA is to use what's called this uh, ED session field that we've, um, we've always had, but you can see that it will give you the export name, the case name as well as the date and the timestamp. So currently the tagging or the tags that you've created in EDA do not transfer to Walker Discovery. However, this is something you can use to actually track which documents went to law at what time and when. So that, and then from here you can, you know, as part of your workflow, I would just create a custom field, um, tag everything that I just exported to law and that's how I can uh, better keep track of what I'm bringing into law if I'm doing multiple exports to the same case. So that's scenario two. I'm gonna close the law here. And we are going to jump to EDA web. All right, so let's log on. Um, so scenario three, is where I've collected some data and I'd like to take a look at what's there to identify potentially you know, hot documents or just be able to explore the different types of documents that I might be looking at. And that is the uh, scenario three here. I'm gonna log in. You'll notice under case manager, we see the Enron sample one case that we were looking at from the desktop version. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And now you have what we are uh, seeing here, the case summary, your filter summary, and then a document timeline. So in this version, we've added this dashboard under document timeline where you can quickly see uh, the date ranges for each, either all of your documents or you can even filter by custodian or import session. Um, we've also added this donut chart here that shows you exactly how many documents were included and how many were excluded. So really a, a great way to look at your data set um, while seeing some visuals here. And I'm gonna show the document timeline because this is something that we also have from the desktop version. So it looks something like this. 
And then if I jump to EDA Web, you'll see that same feature now uh, that we've added. So if I'm looking at all of my documents, it tells me the earliest and the most current date. Again, I can filter on custodians. So if I wanted to look at the emails and the e-docs that came from Susan Bailey and maybe isolate here just a little bit, I can actually zoom in. And now we can see that between you know, April of 2001 to July 2001, there were over at least 2,200 emails sent around that time. And I can even click on this view document hyperlink that will take me directly to that set. So it's really giving you that ease of or simple uh, step to be able to look at the dashboard, identify emails or e-docs that fall within specific date range, and then directly go to that data set by clicking on the hyperlink. So now that it's taken us to the explore option, I can really start digging and, and looking through this data set to see if some of these documents or emails are considered as hot documents, maybe privilege or confidential, um, and I can actually start tagging from this tab or from the web interface as well. So since we've isolated uh, Susan Bailey, I'm going to actually remove that. And what I'm going to do here is look for the word contrast. So keyword searching is something that you can also do from the web interface. And once I type in contract, it is looking for the word contract just between these two dates. So what we're going to do is actually uh, delete those dates here. And we should see about 623 documents. So in the Explore tab, you'll see different categories or fields. You've got your custodians. You have your sources, or in other words, where they came from, import session, and so forth. Now, if I click on custodians, you'll notice, again, another way or method to isolate the word contracts. If I wanted to look for that word specifically within Susan Bailey and maybe Jeff King, I can go ahead and select just those two options or custodians. But for now, I wanted to point out our near duplicate and email thread. And we'll mainly focus on the near duplicate. Um, so if I jump to this third document here, you'll notice that um, this email lets us know that this is inclusive, meaning that there might be other emails that came from the same uh, thread or conversation. And you'll always see an indicator, and it's this red, I don't know if you can see the red icon or the red dot there, along with the attachments, it's telling you it's inclusive, and therefore you should look at that actual email to see what's inclusive about it. Now, if I go to the near dupe, you'll notice three different uh, which appears to be the same document because they have the same file name, but a lot of times in, in the content of each of these emails or the document, there could be a change, whether that's the timestamp or maybe it was forwarded to a different person. Uh, whatever the case might be, you're able to see those changes or differences with the near duplicate uh, tool. So let's look for this. Is a pretty good one here. So we've got a Word document, and you can see that there are several other Word documents above it. It's telling us it's 89.5% similar to this record. Now, to view the near duplicates for this particular set, I can click on my View Near Duplicates, click on a document that I'd like to use for comparison. So let's just go with the NUI Utilities document. And then I want to see exactly what's different between the NUI utilities versus the SAM 3102 document. If I do that and I hit compare, you'll see that this part of the email was deleted or it changed, and you can see the um, sort of key legends here. So that's what was deleted. Anything in blue is what we what was added and anything in black is what remained the same. So you can see right away that um, there were some parts of this email that did change that was deleted and then some parts were added. All right. And if we go to one that's a little bit closer to um, that, you'll probably notice less 
things changing here in terms of content. So that's one that's about 98%. And that is the uh, near duplicate here that we want to show there. Okay, so we'll jump to scenario four. And scenario four is where I would, oh, back here. Scenario four is where I need to provide my client access to their data before processing. So a lot of times if you're working with a client or multiple clients and you're receiving data from them, um, they give you a set of guidelines, you need to process it, but before you can process the data, you need to go in and identify, um, you know, which records need to be exported or maybe the client wanted access to the data to see what kind of search terms you've ran through. Um, and there's really uh, various scenarios or other examples that we can think of as to why uh, your client might want to see the data before you go into production. Um, so with the new feature in EDA, we've now uh, created a way to assign multiple clients to a single user. Now, if you haven't used EDA web, that might be uh, something foreign, but in the previous build, you had to assign a new user for every new client. So when I use the word new client, just think of it as a case because in EDA, when you're creating a case, you are um, ideally also assigning a specific client. So it's really just a way to keep track of which client belongs to which case. And if you were to provide someone access to a specific case, there has to be a client attached to that case. So we'll go through and create a user. As an admin for EDA Web, I can do different things from this page. As an admin, I've got three different usernames set up as myself, EDA user, EDA admin, and that gives me full access to every case that's been created from EDA. And you also have a list of users. Now, users can vary because when you're creating a user, you have the option to either provide a full access or read-only access. So what's nice about EDA Web is that if you are giving your client access to data set or data that you've touched from uh, the desktop version and they needed to take a peek at what was done, what kind of uh, documents you're dealing with, you can give them read-only access so that they don't have the ability to change some of the search terms, some of the filters that you've gone through, and so forth. So those are the two case access level when you're creating a username. We'll just kind of go through this and we'll do um, Emma Jones. Oh, I already have that. So Emma Smith. So we'll do kind of a quick example here with setting up a user for EDA Web. Under client, you'll notice that there are Currently, aren't any client or cases attached to this user. So if I wanted to go ahead and assign Emma Smith a specific case, then I know that XYZ org is actually a client for my Enron sample one case that we're looking at. I can go ahead and select that, which means that Emma will have access to now my Enron sample one case. And then I can generate a password or uh, assign one, so we'll just say generate password. Uh, you've got a couple options here. You could require for them to change it right when they log in or not, and then you can also set an expiration or the day when their access will end. So if you needed to give someone access to a case for just a day or two, this is a good way of setting that up. You would simply put in the expiration date, and after two days, they can no longer access that data set. So once I hit create user, there it is, and now we've added Emma Smith under my user list. And also notice it's just the different uh, kind of examples I've created here, and uh, really the, the simple step to creating or setting up someone with credentials and being able to provide them with your URL or your website URL and then the user and password, and that is really all they need to get or gain access to your data set. All right, so that concludes the EDA uh, desktop and web demo. So we, we can take questions now if there are any in the chat window, uh, Jen. 
So they're not in the chat room, but I can go ahead and unmute everyone so that then if you have a question, feel free. Or if you want to ask a question, you actually can hit star six on your phone and you can unmute. Either way. Um, we have a question, can you discuss the OCR improvements? Sure, so with the OCR improvements, one thing that we did do is that with the new, let's just jump back here, with the new direct export from EDA to law, if you've OCR'd uh, a set of documents already in EDA, the OCR text will carry over to your law case. So I think that's one of the biggest improvements in terms of OCR because in the older version or in the previous version with the non-direct law export, you can go in here, OCR all of your PDFs, create your export, and jump to law, and law will not retain any of the OCR text. So that's, uh, I'd say that's the main um, thing that we've done in terms of OCR. Okay, great, thanks. Um, any other questions, feel free to hit star six on your phone or you can type it into the chat as well. Nope, it does not appear we have any other questions. So thank you everyone for joining. We appreciate your time today. Uh, again, if you have any other questions or you want a deeper dive, feel free to reach out to one of your account managers or sales reps and we're happy to set you up. So thanks again. Thank you, Elaine. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.